Roger Olshansky calls himself a keeper of the past. For much of the year, he lives in this old firehouse in Racine, Wisconsin. Inside are piles of stuff, as he puts it. He collects anything that's old, unusual, or incredibly tacky. Roger buys everything at flea markets around the country. Most of it has sentimental value to him, but is not worth much money. The one exception is this painting, which Roger bought for about $20. His friend, Dale Zerton, recognized it as a 19th century American masterpiece. Now it's on the auction block at Christie's with an estimated value of $300,000. Roger, Dale, and Paul Provost from Christie's, good morning to all of you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Roger, you're the man. You are the man. <laughs> You don't collect things for value's sake. You don't look for investment's sake. So what do you look for when you go to a flea market or a tag sale? Well, again, those three things that were mentioned, that it's old, unusual, or incredibly tacky. And in this particular case, the painting didn't look like this. It was all covered with years and years of, of dust, whatever, on it. And wasn't in this frame. No, oh, it was in a very plain frame. Uh, but it was old, and I looked at the back side, saw that it, it showed that it was old. I usually buy a car full of things wherever I go. This was one of the things I saw early in the morning. I was shopping with a flashlight, told the guy I'll take it, and I'll be back to pick it up later. So it sat for a couple of hours by the car before I came back to uh, pick it up. Did you pay asking price? Was the guy asking 20 bucks, or did you bargain a little bit? You know, I normally bargain a little bit, but I, it's been over four years. So, and again, did I pay 20, did I pay five? Somewhere in there. That's you know the you didn't pay a lot of money for it. No. So no. you sent it back to the house in Racine, right? That's correct. Kept it in a box for four years. Mm -hmm. What made you show it to your friend Dale here? Well, I have old paintings and things throughout the house. And Dale had already spent a good deal of time going through many of the other paintings I have, which, which were swap meet paintings. They weren't anything compared to this. And I said, you know, I've got one in a box I sent back years ago. Um, let's take a look at that. And I'll tell you, for a million dollars, I couldn't have told you what the subject matter was. All right, Dale, now you're a, re a retired police detective, right? That's correct. Where'd you get your knowledge of art? Well, I, I read a lot. I, no formal training, but I read a lot. I go to galleries, I go to flea markets, I go to swap meets and, so, and buy and sell things. So, so Roger takes this painting out of the box and shows it to you. What was your first reaction? I knew immediately that it was an important painting. We carefully took it out of the box, and, and as I drew it out, I, I'd read an, an article about Heed recently, and uh, took it out of the box, and I said, Roger, we got something here. We really have something. Roger, explain, describe his face. I understand it was pretty, it was priceless. What happened was, was the phone rang while we started taking it out, and when I came back, I mean, he was shaken from, from hand to foot and said, Roger, I think we have something here, at which point inside I said, Great, maybe 5000 maybe yeah. 8000 <laughs> <laughs> Having no idea what this was going to end up being. All right, fast forward. Paul, you guys get involved at Christie. Who's the artist? The artist is Martin Johnson Heed, and he's um, an important American landscape and still life painter, painting in the middle of the 19th century. And this is a work that was probably done between 1885 and 1895. Now, from what I understand, Heed is known for his use of light entering a painting, and this Magnolia painting is a good example of that. Exactly. Heed is often known for filling his compositions with a wonderful sense of light. One finds that often in his landscape paintings, but I think when you get a still life like this, which is just so exquisite, the way the flowers are rendered, the magnolia blossoms are, are just beautiful, and you really do get a sense that there's this inner light source from the blossoms. It's going on the auction block. You're, you're estimating $300,000, but isn't it true that some Heed paintings have gone recently for a lot more than that? Yes, at, at Christie's we've sold a number of... Look at of the smile on Roger's <laughs> face. <laughs> <laughs> at, um, at Christie's we've sold a number of paintings by Heed um, over the last couple of years. In 1996, we sold a great Magnolia still life for just under a million dollars. And um, a year ago, we <laughs> sold another great uh, still life painting by Heed for around 850000 So Christie's has a great track record for selling pictures like this. All right, Roger. Now, you're pumping the fist. Keep in mind, you'd be happy with 5000 bucks here, okay? <laughs> I'd be, I would have been happy with 200 what had I not heard. <laughs> <laughs> You've been spoiled in the recent past. What are you going to do with the money? Um... I, I've been thinking about that, and I, and I believe what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend it on uh, booze, <laughs> <laughs> women, gambling, and, and if I have anything left, I'm going to spend it foolishly. Roger. <laughs> Good luck to you. Thank you all, guys. We're back after these messages. <laughs>
Morning. Some 30 million Americans are expected to hit the road this holiday weekend, and they may get a case of sticker shock when they head to the pump. With gas prices nearing record highs today, Friday, May the 26th, 2000. From NBC News, this is Today with Katie Couric and Matt Lauer. Live from Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza. Story of the day. Remember Roger Olshansky? He's the guy we met earlier this week who'd well, bought a painting at a flea market for about 20 bucks. Well, it turned out the painting was a 19th century American masterpiece, and yesterday it sold at Christie's for nearly one and a half million dollars. Roger, welcome back and congratulations. Well, thank you so very, very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> Did you sleep at all last night? Not much. Not much. Uh, it, it was a full day, and, and my system was still just going and full of energy, and uh, it's been, uh, uh, I mean, how do you say it, it, the best day of my life so far. I just want to remind you that when you realized the painting was of some value, when your friend told you that it was done by a pretty famous artist, you said, well, maybe some value, maybe 5,000 bucks would be good. <laughs> $1.49 million, Roger. Take me to the auction, okay? Did anybody say anything to you before the bidding? Uh, we had no indication that, that the bid was going to be anything but within that two hundred and fifty to $350,000 estimate. That was the estimate from Christie's. Yes. Bidding began at 150000 about that? Yes, and started pretty slow. I mean, I, it, I, I thought that, eh, maybe with a little luck we'll hit the 350000 mark, and then it took off like a rocket. I mean, I was so astounded, so exhilarated, it, it, it you know, it's like, and, and at one point, we thought they were done, and we were shaking hands, only to find out the bidding still continued to go. It's, it's like they were bidding in increments of $50,000. Well, what are you thinking when you're hearing numbers go by like six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollars dollars $700,000? Uh, how I can stop from screaming in the middle of this very, very conservative audience otherwise. <laughs> so it ends up that the, the person who wins the bidding did so on the phone. Yes, I believe. Right, and has remained anonymous. Are you at all curious about who bought the painting? Yes, I'm very, very curious. Um, um, and it, it doesn't matter, I guess, that I find out or not. Um, but, yeah, I'd like to know where the painting went to, and uh, uh, it would just be of, of, of general interest to me. What's it going to mean to your life? I mean, when you think about it, $1.49 million dollars, you're a guy who's, who's never really cared all that much about money, from what I understand. But how's this going to change your life? Um, I mentioned earlier that I was going to spend the money on, on, uh, on gambling, um, on women, uh, <laughs> on alcohol. And what I had left, I was going to spend foolishly. Right. <laughs> well, I just got more money to spend foolishly now. <laughs> I mean, do you have any things in mind that you've always wanted to buy that you, you will absolutely go out and get come Tuesday? Ah, uh, a new bathroom. <laughs> the simple things, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I would like eye surgery, uh, so I, I, I don't have to wear glasses a good part of the time. But otherwise, I, I'll make sure that my family is happy and that I... Uh, in some way take care of what their needs are. Otherwise, I'll be at swap meets. You're going to still go to flea markets? Oh, I, that's my lifestyle. I'm going to certainly continue doing that. Can you describe what this whole experience has been like? You've been on television, you've been at Christie's, you've watched the painting go for a million and a half bucks? You know, more than anything, I am so impressed how nice people are. The people at Christie's, the people at the Today Show. Hey, when you've got a million and a half bucks, people are going to be nice <laughs> to you. I promise. You're going to find a lot of that. <laughs> people off the street. I mean, it's just been absolutely amazing. All positive energies. Um, I'm riding on top of the world right now. Well, good things happen to good people, and you seem like good people. Roger, it's a hey, pleasure. Thank you so much. Congratulations to you. Seven